The difficulty is that this election coincides with the 20 years of freedom. National elections tend to have this symbolic gesture about people like Nelson Mandela. And when we go into this particular election, it becomes the ANC's draw card. Secondly to that, I think we've shown some great growth. We've shown the fact that we've taken the DA from about 16% now to enter into a space where really one in four people are voting for the DA and potentially will be doing so coming in the next elections. There's also been these one-hit wonder parties, I call them, uh, the Economic Freedom Front coming on board and in fact uh, creating a populist uh, election mantra and certainly drawing away votes. So we felt their effect on our election, but we equally so are very buoyant about the process we've taken and the provinces that we've been able to engage in. Do you think that democracy itself is safe here? There's a lot of criticism about the national broadcaster not giving opposition parties enough time, concerns even about the uh, Independent Electoral Commission. There are broad trends that the ANC as the incumbents are starting now to use the same practices as we've seen in other African states, more specifically even in Zimbabwe, where in fact there's a co-option of state institutions. We started off with seeing the army, the army's resources being used even in advertising. We saw the social security uh, agencies taking social grants and blankets to people. We've now actually seen the coverage on television being skewed towards uh, the ANC and where it goes, the banning of opposition party adverts, when you talk to people here, to black South Africans, a lot of people still struggle to imagine themselves voting for the DA. It's got a, a toxic brand for some who, who see it as still, even 20 years after the advent of democracy, still linked to the white minority. I think uh, it's a misreading of our policy. The ANC's model of transformation has empowered only a few rich ANC people. When you talk about how do you transfer wealth in a strategic way, it cannot be delinked from economic growth. And so we argue the case for 8% economic growth that ultimately when you do that, transformation is not to the detriment of the growth of the economy of this country. Do you worry that that debate is being hijacked by more populist elements? Absolutely. And I think even the economic freedom fighters' uh, own populist rhetoric is impracticable. First of all, nationalization has been proven here in Africa to not work. The state agencies that we have here in South Africa don't deliver the outcomes that we require. You start with the South African Airways and you move to other state agencies. You start to discover that governments should not be engaged in running uh, entities like airlines, etc. And yet the EFF wants to now suddenly nationalize the mines and cripple this particular economy. So that populism, that idea that we are now going to double everyone's social grants is in fact an insult to South Africa.